Welcome, oh the Impivara. It's so great to have you, darling, here. Here and and thank you, thanks for joining this this summit. How are you? Hey, uh, great. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. And and well, I'm actually I'm really fine. The feeling is very good, and it's, it's always nice to be with you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alti. Hey, tell us a little bit about your backstory. What are you doing? You're an entrepreneur. You're a management consultant, coach. You are a leadership coach. So, yes. what I'm are you doing and how did you come to the point where you are? Well, actually, I've been as a coach and or and a business consultant for about 15 years now, uh, working with uh, different kind of companies, so, uh, huge one, uh, international companies, and of course, with uh, some smaller companies here in Finland and also abroad. Uh, before the train, uh, training uh, career, I used to work in the ICT business as a project manager. I worked in uh, different countries here in Finland, of course, but uh, also in Pakistan, uh, states, uh, uh, in different countries of Europe, and so on. So that's the background. And why I became, uh, why I started this training, I started to wonder when I was a project manager that uh, how could I help my customers to go through the change uh, when they are working with the ICT projects? And I was looking for that, that uh, what could help them? And that's the reason why I'm in this area at the moment. I try to learn a little bit more about uh, how people are behaving in the chains and what could help them, how to motivate them and that kind of stuff. So do you have... I'm working here at the moment, yeah. Uh, do you have any nutshell version that what is the answer to, to those questions? <laughs> <laughs> I would be happy if I have a, 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 just one <laughs> answer or something like that. And I don't have the magic wounds either. <laughs> But so, hey, tell us a little bit, because I know that you have a, a, some kind of very common situation in, in management teams and, and so on. So I know that you have a... a yeah, a, the, quite yeah. often the management teams, they, there's a lot of uh, diversity in the management teams. And the people are not understanding each other. They think that the other person is difficult because uh, uh, they are not behaving in the same way as I am behaving. And that might... Uh, affect kind of uh, conflicts in the team and yeah. people are not willing to work together. That's uh, my part. That's when I come in and making them to understand uh, a little bit more about each other and to work together. So uh, a common understanding. is this very common in, in your world though? Of course, always when you get this, when they hire you, there is a problem, but, but what is your experience? How common is it? It's, uh, it's sad, but it's really common. For example, last week I have two uh, management teams with the same problem. Uh, during the last three months, there have been maybe about four, five management teams with the same problem, with the same situation. And, and the problem it, was? And the problem is that they stop talking to each other. They are not communicating what they are looking for. They don't have a common understanding where the company is going and uh, they are not willing to discuss about those issues because everybody wants to kind of a work just on their own area, on their own specific area. But uh, they are not uh, willing to understand what the others are doing. So, and I, I say that they are not willing to understand. I, I think that the summit attendees are very eager to hear. So what do you do in, the, in that kind of, how do, how do you start the process? Uh, actually, what we are doing uh, in the process, in the beginning, of course, I will talk with the manage, uh, top management, with the pe all the people, uh, we have a sort kind of uh, discussion with them, with everyone, and then I will do the uh, everything disc uh, work of leaders profile for them, so that they will understand how they are behaving, how they are acting as a leader, how they are leading a change, and in that way. And uh, then we are combining those uh, profiles together, and we are looking for that uh, what kind of uh, leadership culture they have in the company, and uh, how what they should change so that there will be a common understanding and a common understanding that uh, what we are doing together and why we are doing it and what is uh, each other's responsibility yeah. area. Tell me, Oti, how do people react when they, so to say, face the brutal reality? <laughs> <laughs> Quite often they start blaming each other. <laughs> okay. It's interesting, but uh, that happens in every level of the organization that they start blaming someone else. It's uh, quite often, it's quite painful to 
to realize that it's my my problem. Maybe it's uh, it has something to do with me and with my communication. Yeah, I and always said that all the leadership problems or all the management problems in the all, all the problems in the company are leadership or management problems, and most of them are communication problems. Communication problems. Yeah. yeah. Then when you open the profiles, what happens then? The, when they see their own profiles and the other guys' profiles, what happens then? For example, last week in one meeting, we have a interesting situation. It was a management team of five people, and there were there were two people who were exactly the same kind of profile, almost exactly the same kind of profile, and the three others were totally different. And these two start thinking that the others are difficult people because they are not acting like us. But when they saw the profiles, they understand that, okay, maybe those people are not the problem. Maybe we have to uh, communicate a little bit more. Maybe we have to start uh, an open discussion. And maybe we have to start building trust to each other. Because, yeah. uh, they because of the lack of the communication, they start to have a lack of trust also. And then they are not uh, bringing their issues to the table, and then they are not committed to work together. So, yeah. The, the trust topic is so big, and it's in so many places. And when you don't yeah. have trust, you, you start to control, and then you control, and then you squeeze, squeeze your organization to death. Yeah by just over controlling and, and that's such a big job. Hey, but I agree. It's, it's about micromanaging, yeah. it, it stops uh, motivation. Yeah, and then I know that uh, if we go, go, jump away now from the customer cases to your own case, and yeah. I know that you started to think on that, that you have to, you have to write the strategy and you are a one person micro company. Yeah, that's true. Now, why did you, OT, start to I think that I have to write my strategy. Why can't you keep it in your head and go with the flow? <laughs> it's funny because if I go with the flow, uh, there are so many interesting things around me that I start to focus sometimes over there, sometimes over there, and that, that's the way. Then I lose my focus totally. And uh, somehow I noticed a couple of years ago that I noticed that I have to think more clearly that where I start focus on, in what kind of companies, in what kind of uh, customer cases, and uh, what kind of uh, like uh, cooperation with the other companies. Because uh, I'm one woman company, and I'm always working together with the other coaches or consultants on, and so on. So I also have to think that with whom I'm working, who are that kind of uh, people or companies which are more kind of uh, useful for me, uh, especially useful for my customers. Yeah. And I was a little bit lost somehow a couple yeah. of years. And then you found this, then you found a strategy one pager. Yeah. And then you started to work with that. So t tell us a little bit how it, how it was. You started with the focus areas and your business purpose and... and uh, yeah. Well, first of all, I start to think that uh, why I am in this business, what is my main goal? Uh, why I'm working in this area? What is kind of the reason for me? That uh, and what's the reason? Was the, re was the reason money, or did you have some higher level, higher, higher level purpose? <laughs> <laughs> of course, money is there. <laughs> why should I say that there's something else? But uh, I'm always thinking that the, how could I help my customers to survive in their everyday life? Uh, my work is some kind of uh, in, in that way that. Uh, uh, I'm kind of thinking that I have to support my customers. It's kind of a management and leadership support. Uh, it's not only that I'm going there and telling that how should they work, but it's more like working together so that they will find out a better way in their everyday life. But in the same time that I'm working so, so much with my customers, I start to think that maybe I have to focus on myself also. That okay. who should help me or uh, with whom I should work, what kind of companies I'm willing to work so that I will learn a little bit more so that I can give them a little bit more. And you also told me, I remember, that you, you were in a crossroad, that you have yeah. selected what kind of consultation will you do in the future. Tell about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, because uh, I've been, uh, I have done quite many, uh, well, different uh, kind of consultants in, in, the, in the companies, like sales and everything like that.
But now I decide that uh, during this process, I decide that, okay, I will leave that kind of stuff to the others. I have very good uh, coaches on my network who can do that stuff. And uh, if my customers are asking, for example, that uh, if you need someone, well, I need, we need some kind of support to work with our sales, then I thought, okay, I will give uh, someone else phone number that, okay, I have a good one for you. But I will focus on leadership and management Yeah. in, in overall. And of course, uh, in the same time, that uh, how the teams are working together. Because if the management team is not working together, if they don't have a common understanding, how could they think that the people who are working in the company have a common understanding. Yeah. And that's a reason. That's a reason. I would like, like, I really hope that the management teams and uh, the people in, the, in every company, they will have a good team around them in the same way as I would, I need a team around me. And then when you started to work with the focus areas, what happened then? There must, must there, you realize this, that you need to select your, your team members, so to say? Yeah, the, uh, the team members, because there are many companies, uh, well, many people who are always calling me that, hey, would you like to work with us? So we have a very good project and so on. And quite often I have noticed that it will take really a lot of time from me. And at the same time, I'm losing my focus. Uh, so during this process, I realized that what kind of uh, cooperation companies or cooperation people or what kind of network I need around me. I know what kind of person I am, so I need different kind of people around me. Yeah. If you understand yeah. what I mean. And, and then I realized, okay, maybe I have to select uh, maximum three or four companies with whom I'm working yeah. in, this, uh, in this customer project. Yeah. So that was a big focus area. That yeah, that was a big, one of the biggest. Did yeah. you have any other focus areas then also? Uh, the other one was uh, scalability, because it's quite uh, obvious that uh, if I'm uh, just one person here, what I can sell, I can sell my time. And uh, sometimes you might notice that there are so many projects going around you that you don't have time for yourself. So I think that maybe I have to work also in a different way. Maybe and you realized this scalability thing during the process. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I have been thinking about that, but the, during this process, it came qu quite clear for me that what kind of stuff I'm going to do. So like, the scalability uh, thing, which for, uh, well, there are three focus areas I know on your one strategy one page. So where did you put the team, and where did you put the scalability? In what order? Uh, oh. <laughs> First of all, uh, there was uh, this scalability, and it came with a team. And uh, with, the, with the scalability, there was kind of, a, if I should start writing a blog, or if I should start uh, doing the kind of a network training. Yeah. But the network training is not something like that. I'm, I'm selling it in the net, but it's more like a training for my customers using different tools. That, yeah. that will help me a lot, because then I can put the, kind of a standard uh, training models for them uh, bit, between the tr uh, actual face-to-face -face training sessions. Yeah. So, uh, and, and still about the, uh, so the scalability is to use the team, you, you said. Yeah. But, but how about the di digital scalability? What uh, that, that was one of the things, the network, network training. Network I mean, training. the training programs, okay. what I'm going to use with my customers. So you started to awesome. build those. Yeah. Well, actually, actually, what I have done so far is something like that. I have selected a tool for me that what I'm using on my trainings. And uh, now I have to write down all the material for them. And in the same time, when I'm writing the material for the training, uh, digital training, uh, I can use them also when write, like writing a blog or something like that. So that yeah. I can sell it in the same time. So you, you reuse content. Yeah, that's very Yeah, cool. yeah. That's so, uh, so how did you feel about the one page when you were ready and how long did it take to, for you this, this thought process before you had the first version there? Actually, the first version of the process uh, didn't take very long, it, maybe an hour, two hours or something like that. Uh, but afterwards, I have a kind of a rewrite something and it's because uh, now it uh, brought, my, brought to me the kind of idea, maybe I have to focus this area a little bit more, maybe I have to do this one. Yeah. And in the same time, 
about the scalability that who could help me to do the stuff because I shouldn't do those things by myself. But yeah. I have to find out someone who's writing stuff and uh, who is doing the technical work and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. When you are alone, I mean, you can change your strategy very often because you don't have the inertia coming from other people. So That's true. I think also, but, but also in the team, so we had the experience that five version of the one pager before you are content is very common and then it has to live. Yeah, of course. When, when situation... but, now I have, but now I have kind of, an, uh, kind of a focus area where I'm concentrating on. Yeah. And in, in that area, I can do the, some smaller changes, but the focus areas there, it yeah. will help me a lot because now I know that I don't concentrate on that stuff, but I will concentrate on these areas. How was the process, by the way, when you did the one picture? Was it difficult? Did you find it very... No, no it wasn't. But because the questions there were easy and the videos there were very good, they helped me a lot because, uh, of course, I'm doing the same kind of work with my customers, but sometimes yeah. you need to have a kind of an other person or other system who is making you to think the yeah. stuff that you are you're not normally thinking so by yourself. So what if you would summarize the, 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 the benefit of the one picture strategy or having a written strategy for a, for a one lady company? So, I mean, come on, what, what is the number <laughs> one benefit? <laughs> number one benefit for me is that I know my focus areas now. Okay. Because otherwise I will be running around and doing that kind of stuff that what I shouldn't do. Now I know that where I have to put my time. Yeah. And I will have a kind of a decided deadlines for me that, okay, before the end of like May, I should do that kind of stuff. And before the end of uh, June, I have to do this stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. It, it really helps me because otherwise I will just go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and listen, um, uh, still, uh, uh, you did this a few months ago, I remember. Yeah. So, um, so uh, what has happened since then? I mean, then comes the daily hassle again and the daily pressure, and yeah. it's very easy to forget about the focus. How, how had you experienced the challenges in implementing? Well, uh, for me, the challenging in implementing is that if I don't have deadlines, I don't do anything, because otherwise I'm so busy. But now I have the deadlines. Well, some of them have gone through. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know that sometimes you don't uh, get them. But uh, still, the, uh, the issues are on my mind. The issue is on the table. Yeah. And it, it's kind of a reminder me all the time. Because I don't put the strategy one page or to somewhere, but I will keep it on there on my wall so that I will see it every day. Okay, very, very good solution. It's, it's kind yeah. of a... Yeah, and it's, it's human. Kind of I mean, something like that. Nobody, nobody, it doesn't go like a machine. Nobody is like that. You have, it's quite normal that, that some deadlines have to be yeah. there. And, but then you have kind of your backlog of work and you know what to yeah. focus on now. And then you take stuff from your backlog yeah. to, to your active focus. Yeah. So that's the reason. So... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and the one thing is also so that uh, you will keep it there so that you will see it. Because if, uh, if it's somewhere hidden in the uh, server or somewhere there, you don't see it. But yeah, you, have to, see it. Yeah, you, you have to see it all the time. Yeah, like I every week or every I day. I have it in my phone as the, as the front. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, there on, the, on, on my wall, <laughs> on <laughs> okay. my desk, so that I will see it every day. Hey, uh, Oti, I think... Your, your story is very useful for many people because we are all in the same, same situation that we have so much to do and we need to decide that which things are a little bit more important than other things. Yeah. And, of, and of course, the short-term pressure overrules easily the, the little bit longer. I always use the metaphor of deck chairs on Titanic that you put them in yeah. very straight rows and you polish them. And that's important, but even more important to see that you don't hit the iceberg. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and at the same time, if you have a clear focus areas and you know that where you are going, then you are not taking the kind of risks what will stop your business. Yeah. And you are not selecting the kind of uh, 
companies or workers, uh, cooperation, something like that, what will have a negative effect on you. So what would, you, would be your top advice now to the listener if you would summarize your, your, your experience? So what would you say about having a written strategy on one page? <laughs> Uh, for me, it's really, really important uh, that I will have it on, my, on one page. It's uh, simple enough. Uh, I would like to do it always in the way so that keep it simple. And when I have these four areas where I'm going to focus on this year, it's much easier for me to go on and work for that. And yeah. in the same time, even if you, that you are working just by yourself alone or a loner sometimes, it's really important to know that where you are going, because if you are, if you don't know where you are going, then the other people are just kind of uh, ripping you uh, out out of your way, and you are doing the stuff what the other people are willing, but not you not doing the stuff what you are willing to do. Yeah. So right. it's it's important to have your own goals, your own strategy, your own important importance areas, and that kind of stuff. Then it's easier for you to go on. Alti, you're such a great, you're a great person. I, 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 you're my super, super favorite <laughs> <laughs> coach. I think you're great. Thank you so much, Alti. Thank it's you. It's a great session. And have a nice day. Okay, bye-bye. See you later. <laughs> See you, bye-bye.